Today we're going to talk about a study in Lancet. It's the mindfulness, uh, the mindful student study. Um, <clears throat> it was published uh, in uh, 2016, 2017, very recently. Oh no, excuse me, 2018. Um, Mindfulness-Based Intervention to Increase Resilience to Stress in University Students. This was in Cambridge, so it was a well-known university in England. Um, <clears throat> what was the measurement? How did they de define stress? What was, the, um, what was the result? Did it appear to be effective? How many uh, students would you have to train? Uh, what kind of training was it? <clears throat> We'll talk about all that in just a minute, um, and we'll also talk about <clears throat> who cares. Why, why does that matter? I mean, or why does that apply for this kind of channel? Um, this is a heart attack, stroke prevention uh, channel, dementia prevention. Um, <clears throat> first of all, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E um, I'm a physician that started off as an ER doc. Uh, got very frustrated with all of the preventable illness and injury coming into the emergency department, went to Johns Hopkins for training and prevention, and went on to run the uh, postgraduate program in prevention there. Uh, I've been practicing prevention and running uh, preventive and primary care programs since then. Now, <clears throat> what has uh, stress got to do with a prevent heart attack, stroke, and uh, dementia prevention? Well, and even some cancers, prevention of some cancers. So, <clears throat> As we've talked about in multiple videos, um, cardiovascular inflammation is a uh, major driver for uh, most of these. And guess what? Or, or arterial inflammation. And guess what? The major uh, driver for those appears to be insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome or prediabetes or diabetes. You know, all of these things are impaired cellular metabolism of uh, carbohydrates. So <clears throat> ask any diabetic that measures and watches their uh, blood sugar, um, what is the impact of stress on their health? And they'll show you very clearly. Uh, stress tends to, in it, it's an increase of cortisol and cortisol increases blood sugar. Um, <clears throat> there are other uh, there are plenty of studies that have shown stress is a major driver for um, uh, hard uh, evidence, negative impact uh, on the body, biochemical things, things with our immune system, for example, um, other biochemical indicators. But let's get to the actual study itself. Again, this was in Lancet, uh, well known, national, uh, internationally known uh, medical journal. This is a randomized clinical trial, so <clears throat> uh, unusual in terms of the quality of the study. Um, just a couple of background points. Uh, students actually end up needing more uh, mental health services the second year in college. They didn't go on to explain that, but they did go on to say over the past few years they've had a 50% increase in the uh, demand by students for mental health services. Um, <clears throat> well, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Again, it was a randomized controlled trial, University of Cambridge. Um, there were the, uh, the study uh, impact or the study uh, was to look at an eight week uh, training program for students. Now, <clears throat> the measurement was called the core o OM, clinical outcomes in routine evaluation, outcome measurements. Um, what is that and how does that measure stress? Well, I looked it up. This is core. It's a, uh, it's a free um, consortium that was developed in England to look at outpatient, the quality and impact of outpatient services. Not so much the quality of outpatient services, but the impact. It's a 34-question uh, survey with and the information on the study and how it was developed um, 
the research behind the validity, all of that's right there on the internet. I'll uh, provide a, a um, link for that as well. Uh, again, 34 items. Uh, you score all of them on a, on a scale of 1 to 5. Um, and again, the idea is to do pre and post therapy. Now, <clears throat> what was the results? Uh, first of all, they did randomization. They looked at uh, demographics, um, age, uh, other things that might impact um, uh, the scores, and the randomization appeared to have been effective. They did it by um, um, a random uh, software, which was distal, distant from this, uh, from this group. Obviously, as you think about it, the students had to know. And yes, the students and the folks administering the, uh, the intervention knew, but the uh, folks that were doing the analysis did not. Uh, between September 28, 2015 and January 15, 2016, they enrolled. Uh, they assigned 616 students to the program, uh, 309 to get uh, support as usual. Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, 309 to the um, MSS or intervention group and uh, 307 to the support as usual. So the first group, the intervention group, got um, the eight week uh, training. And the second group, or the controlled group, got uh, support as usual. The first group got the support as usual, mental health access as they needed. Uh, there were 453 participants completed the, uh, which completed that core OM examination. Um, <clears throat> Of that uh, 300 in the control group, 59% completed at least half the course. So that's a very small percentage of folks that actually completed even half the course. Now, this, they had reduced distress scores during the examination period compared with uh, support as usual. Even though, again, just over half of them completed half or more of the eight-week training. The scores were 87 versus 111. Now, <clears throat> let me take us back to that. That hit me when I saw that score. These are the scores for this test. And you see moderate stress is 51 to 67. Moderate to severe stress is 68 to 84. And 85 and above <laughs> is severe stress. And as you saw there, it was 87 to, uh, for the intervention group versus 111 for the, um, for the control group. That made me go back and reread components of the study, thinking maybe I'm misreading it. No, I wasn't. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, this is Cambridge, a world-class university, and the, the uh, scores, the survey was taken during exam time. So, you know, it reminds me of exam time during med school. So, <clears throat> just a couple of other points. Um, they went on to talk about why are we having such an increase, a 50% increase in um, demand for counseling? Uh, at the university from 2010 to 2015. They didn't talk about anything local. They said uh, m maybe the students are actually experiencing more mental disorders. Uh, the reasons are unclear. Maybe the students are less resilient in, than in the past, or maybe they're just uh, more comfortable reporting and seeking help. Um, bottom line, though, is the... Um, this does represent a huge opportunity for teaching resilience if it does improve resilience and prevention of stress uh, for these students. <clears throat> Obviously, I got interested in this because the population I work with is mostly middle-aged. Well, um, again, if you have an intervention like this that improves resilience and decreases stress reaction, 
That's huge. <clears throat> they did do a, a, a brief meta-analysis of data existing prior to that. There was some information, some evidence. It wasn't great. It was the studies that existed prior to this were generally underpowered. Um, they enrolled too few students, had no prospective protocol, obvious um, potential for bias. So <clears throat> I think that's the key points of this study. Um, I would go through some of the charts and graphs, but again, we're getting on in time. I think I've hit the major points. Thanks for your attention.